Welcome back to another episode. In part one, we talked about why plant your own seedlings, what kind of containers to use, and what kind of soil to use. In this episode, we'll talk about planting depth, water, light, and heat. Let's get going. Next, determine your planting depth. To do that, just look on the back of the package. For example, spinach is a half an inch, and lettuce is an eighth of an inch. To determine measurements in the garden, including planting depths, we've actually made a little stick that where we, in which we have one inch, six inch, and then the whole stick is at 12 inches. And for planting depths of one inch, but also of at half inch and quarter inch, we have right on it, so it's easy to keep. You might think, oh, I'll know, it's about a quarter of an inch. It's, it's, having something like this that's actually marked off is very handy. You could even just use a little piece of plastic that you make a notch on it. But keeping something where you have your, your regular planking depths marked on it really helps. And so for us, we'll go in and just make little, I'm doing an eighth inch now. I don't have an eighth inch mark, but it's easy for me to look at what is half of a quarter inch. And I'm just doing little sweeps of soil aside. And I have a little a notch there that I can keep my eye on to make sure I'm staying true to that. Again, one might think, oh, well, I'll definitely stay true to how deep that is, how hard is it to remember what an eighth of an inch is. But it's just nice to have something that keeps you honest because it's amazing how much you'll get a little bit deeper than you said you would. So in this row I'm doing spinach, so I'm up to the half inch mark and I just put it in until that, that um, notch, the half inch notch, is right at the level of, not the soil that gets bunched up around it, but the soil in the rest of the, the uh, pot or planting plug spot. When you put seeds in the holes, you can put in one seed per hole, and then any that don't sprout, you can just add in another seed later. The only problem with that is if there's seeds that take a long time to sprout, that the ones that you add in later, they take a while to catch up, and sometimes they don't really catch up. By that time, they're shaded out by the other seedlings, and they just don't quite catch up. Or you can put two or even more seeds in per hole, and, but then you have to snip off whatever ones you decide aren't gonna be the ones that you're gonna let live. Once you have your seedlings planted, it's time to think about watering. There are really three options. Top watering, bottom watering, and spraying. If you don't bottom water, you probably think of top watering as just watering. And it is just as it says, watering the seedlings from the top. The problem with that is when you do that, it often creates a blowout. Especially with something like that where it's that far above, but even with a smaller, with a smaller container like this, and try to, as you might to get as close as you can, you'll often get these blown out areas of soil, especially when the plants are young. Two things really bad are happening there. One, you're compacting the soil, and two, even worse, you're blowing that soil out and likely a whole bunch of seeds with it. So how about some other strategies? Well, one is to simply spray the seedlings. But this works maybe your first couple times, but there's so much soil in there, the amount of spraying you have to do, it gets exhausting. And it's also tough because your bot bottles, in order to not be spraying such a distance, your bottle's at such an angle, you have to keep on filling up your bottle even when it's half full. And you can get fancy-dancy spray bottles like this that'll help you get closer. The other problem is, you're spraying the soil, you can actually watch it compact as you're spraying it. It's not the best solution. The trouble is, no matter which spray, kind of spray bottle you use, it's a large volume of soil to be wetting with just a spray bottle, and the entire time you're compacting your soil. The solution to both of these is bottom watering. Bottom watering is simply watering from the bottom up. So you water inside your container, inside whatever tray you have your pots in, and let it soak in from the bottom up. Here's a tray of seedlings that need some water. I'll just simply remove a seedling from that tray and the seedling back and their water. The first time you do this, you'll need a decent amount of water in order for it to, to soak up and all that volume of soil. And you may even need to spray a little bit on the top, especially if you have a lot of, of peat moss and, and it's having a hard time absorbing that water all the way up to where the seeds are. But besides that, it's a wonderful strategy to combat everything. Plus, you know that your soil is watered. If it's wet on top, it's soaked up through capillary action all the way from the bottom all the way to the top. And you know it's good to go. Easy to check. 
Next it's time to think about lighting. Your seedlings need a lot of light to be healthy. I've had met people who will say, oh my seedlings are really healthy, look at how long and tall they are. You don't want long tall seedlings, you want short, squat, stocky, root seedlings. You want seedlings that are built like brick shit houses. Unless you have a greenhouse, you're going to have to supply some sort of light. Your simplest strategy is simply a shop light. There are some LEDs available and, there, and you can also get some very expensive planting lights. You can also get an, an inexpensive shop light, four feet long and with T12 or T8 tubes. There's where the secret is. These come in cool and warm spectrum lights. The old adage has always been just put a cool light and a warm light in each one. I think the, the break off for cool and it's measured in Calvin's 3000 I think is the break off for warm to cool. However, the, the warm light, that's for fruiting and flowering. The cool light is for vegetative growth. So for seedlings, all you want is vegetative growth. So you can just put all cool lights in your shop lights. My family and all my close gardening friends have used these for years, for decades, for 50, 60, 70 years. They have raised wonderful seedlings with these. Inexpensive, easy, anybody can do it. One of the secrets though is keep them almost as close to your plants as like closer than you think is, well, keep them just above your plants within an inch to three inches from the light touching your plants and have a setup so where you can raise them a little bit as the plants get bigger. All these seedlings have been raised over the past several weeks under fluorescent lights. The trick is to have a setup that keeps that your light just above your plants and allows you to raise it as they grow. And for trays this wide, we actually will have two sets of fluorescent lights over a, of trays this side. Just one set of lights above this will give long spindly plants. If you constantly are growing long and spindly seedlings, your problem is lack of light. For your warm season vegetables like peppers, tomatoes, and your cucubits, your melons, and your squash, you're also going to need some form of heat. You can you get this however you want. I'm not trying to prescribe a certain way. You can do it however you want. Uh, some people, I've heard of people putting them on top of the refrigerator, on top of a radiator. Wherever you can get consistently around 80 degrees is what you want. Now, this next thing I'm going to say, I'm absolutely not advocating. I just want to be honest. We tried regular old heating pads, like body heating pads for years. And basically because they're like, oh, it should work, it be, should be fine. They have automatic turn off situations that we try to override or keep on turning on. We did that until Jen's aunt's house burned down because of a heating pad that was left on. At that point, we'd probably had $100 in heating pads and a regular heating pad that's designed for it, designed to stay on, designed to stay at the exact right temperature and designed to not burn your house down cost $80 for this size. I think you can get them starting at $35 or $40. Johnny's would be a good place to start if you're, if you're curious to look. They can fit trays this size, or we often will have them on this way. And like I said, they're meant to stay on. They're meant to stand for the exact right amount of heat. You want to keep your, your melons wash, your peppers, and your tomatoes around 80 degrees, especially when they're germinating. Otherwise, they just won't germinate. Hopefully some of those secrets and suggestions will solve some of your seedling issues or help you feel empowered to get started on your own if you've never done it before. Until next time, stay open to growing. And as always, check out our Twitter and Instagram. We're using Twitter as a sort of a garden calendar reminder. And our Instagram, pretty much just all the most beautiful photos Jen finds in the garden, coupled with some of the ones I just find timely for when certain parts of the season. By the same token, check out our website for much more information on all of these topics. The website and accompanying book, like these videos, are an attempt to restore and pass on what used to be our birthright, the generationally passed on knowledge of how to grow our own food. I've been dismayed my whole life when watching gardeners struggle for lack of knowledge that used to be passed down so freely it was taken for granted. At the core, these generational secrets to success communicated three absolutely critical and three accompanying fundamentals that allow us, as gardeners, to grow amazingly healthy and productive produce. It's time we restore that birthright. Also included on the website are a plethora of other little secrets to success, from starting your own seedlings to how, much mulch, how to use mulch, from seed and plant selection to dealing with sod. 
We hope you enjoy them, learn from them, and pass them on. Happy gardening.